Hello, my name is not Sebastian Le Lage. Uh, if I can't say my last name, I must not be. I'm Makai Stevens, but I'm a big fan, so um, super fan. Yeah, that's it. Uh, anyway, so we're talking about this uh, uh, coding adventure here uh, for the ecosystem. Yeah, so it, it looks like this. It's really cool. Uh, and he released the source code um, through the GitHub uh, a little while ago, right here. And uh, so uh, he's working on a version 2, so that should be out by... I don't know when, but probably as soon as I do this video, I'll put it out there. But um, I felt like, hey, let's um, let's do some. Uh, so, anyways, this is uh, the Unity Hub. I've got the 2019.3, the Alpha, and they just released the 2019.2. Um, I don't know what the project was started in, so um, I'm just going to go. Uh, I've tried it in 2019.3. Um, it probably would eventually work, um, but I think there was too many um, issues with that. So. Um, I, uh, it's just kind of, I've found that you, you kind of have to go through the upgrade process to get it to 2019.2 um, uh, and then go to 2019.3 um, and then you, you can't downgrade it now because of the, there's massive UI changes um, because of the new scalable UI in 2019.3. So I'm sure you can downgrade it, but it's, uh, it's pretty rough <laughs> as Quilly team tried to find out. Anyway, so this uh, coding adventure, uh, it's a ecosystem. Uh, there's a f quite a few questions in here. Um, let's see if I can find some of the ones that I, was, I thought I was going to address. Um, uh, anyway, so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, miscommunication because he didn't handle the um, didn't talk about the the foxes and how um, they presented them in such a way that the in the, the video in the original video here version one that it was. Um, you know that the foxes but the foxes do have the actual uh, needs and hungers and sort of uh, the, so. and these always are really hard to get these ecosystems to balance out correctly um, that's why our world in, in this ecosystem is amazing uh, yeah so uh, but I'm still a newbie and I can't find explanations or tutorials for that kind of uh, terrain biome uh, yes yeah, so we're gonna be talking about the terrain a little bit uh, we'll talk about the biomes a little bit um, they're pretty much um, um, they're very different than one I handle, so and I'm kind of still new. I've, I've done this for like 20 years, so I'm still very newbie at this. Uh, so it it's, was made in C-sharp uh, from Kynan Ky here. Uh, it was made in C-sharp um, uh, with the Unity. I think, yeah, so you know, Sebastian does kind of answer some of these questions. Uh, he's working on a version 2.0. Uh, we can go to the, uh, here, let's hit the GitHub. Uh, it takes these, uh, you know, the uh, main dev of, of unity is like yeah we want unity to work in like 10.2 seconds it's like yeah let's get the uh, <laughs> you know let's get the uh, 20 minute compile time to work uh you know to build time anyway so he's working on um uh, he wants to upgrade the the ecosystem simulation to um current uh re-implement everything to support a large world so uh he was did this about 18 days ago um uh, so I, I but my computer went offline and uh, anyway so if we go into the uh, script folder, uh, the scenes folder, I should say, uh, we have this thing called terrain. Um, yeah, so it starts out, um, this is the terrain, uh, which is kind of a, a pre-built thing. Um, it's got this mesh renderer on it and a, a mesh filter. Um, I guess, the, yeah, the mesh filter looks good, I guess. Uh, anyways, then it's got a terrain generator, which is his script. Excuse me, and then it's got environmental. Uh, so if we run this thing, we uh, we get an error right away. So I've actually uh, fixed this. So it says uh, invalid cast exception. Simplified cast is not valid. So we go into here. Uh, we boot up the uh, 2019. Uh, none of this is actually required, but it's my coding environment. Um, I, I love I love Visual Studio. So um, and actually actually works quite a bit better now. I've noticed with the release version. Anyway, so here's the this. It's trying to convert a mesh render. And it's instantiating um, the tree prefab. Uh, oops. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, anyway, so it, it tries to um, do a tile uh, centers, centries. Uh, that's tile centers. It's a, a Britain form of uh, center. Anyway, uh, so it's just trying to do a prefab. We look uh, through the code here, and we can see the environment. Is, and what we see here is the tree. Uh, it's a type mismatch. It sort of means that some of the code, uh, the mesh render was upgraded, but it uh, that's what it's looking for here. Uh, if you go to the uh, definition of the prefab 
you can see that it, it wants a mesh renderer. Um, somehow it was either a game object or a mesh render originally. Um, so anyways, you can just click this button right here, uh, which pulls up the little menu. So you can see the preview works fine, but then there's no... Um, some reason the assets don't work very well. Um, so what we can do here, let me actually stop that because that won't work. Under the prefabs, we actually have this tree object uh, right here. Uh, it's just it's got a mesh render. It's got the tree object. You can actually double click and it goes into the um, the mesh of uh, the prefab scene. Uh, it looks great. Um, uh, and then we go back into here. So uh, all we actually need to do is pretty simple um, to fix this is we just drag the uh, prefab back onto the um, the prefab. Um, and then that will sort of hit one problem, um, but then hopefully you have a really super computer. Um, I, th yeah, I think these clear on. Yeah, so this will clear out. Uh, so anyway, so then about five hours later, nothing happens. Yay! It actually wasn't that quick. Uh, we go into the scene view, then we sort of have this sort of, um, uh, there's our terrain, but, but it's like it's chunking. Uh, you can sort of you can really see it it takes a few seconds uh let's see if we can get the stats on this um oh that's over here yeah so in the stats uh no wow v-sync is not well okay that v-sync should be turned on uh anyways under stats you can see it's it's actually running pretty good i guess uh, well partly because there's nothing in the scene but uh anyway so the problem here is uh there's a tree placement uh um, thing so we sent that to 0.15 oh, 0.15 um, this so so this uh, so this is a, a, a terrain uh, and then it's got this mesh uh, sort of uh, built on top of it anyway so from there we go in there um, and this will actually get us to a better scene um, you can see the tree trees are much more um, much cooler um, in terms so the 1.0 would just is just you know it's a it's basically a like a that's 50, uh, 0.15 is basically a 15 percent chance for a tree so it's like so it's like you you have a t you have a tile or a little you know a minecraft tile or whatever a little square and it's like hey is there a tree here and it's checks and it says you know 15 percent chance you know no but a hundred percent chance or 1.0 would put a tree that's why you saw a tree in every direction uh, I haven't figured out the animals or the um, grass um, but I'm sure they're there. You can sort of go through the prefabs. Um, he's got the really cool bunnies um, here, uh, which are pretty awesome. Uh, he's got the bunny zero and the bunny one. Um, well, I'll call it bunnies, bunny knot. Uh, anyways, uh, this just means I think one's a male and one's a female. Uh, he's got the fox as well. Uh, so you kind of have access to that. Um, and then they have their animations through there. Uh, you can see the plant as well, sort of a cool little plant. Oh, I guess that is pretty cool. Um, anyways, I've been thinking about, um, they're kind of a little big for my environments, but, uh, and then anyways, the trees, um, yeah, so the next question is sort of the terrain, so let's go back into the, um, I mean, uh, so I guess the next, well, let me look at the, um, what you could do here is if you do this and this, um, let's see if we can sort of get this to be, um, Ah, there we go. That was below on the Z. There we go. Uh, I actually have a pretty cool camera system, an RTS sort of pre-built camera system here. So anyway, so now we got this. Um, I don't think there's any scripts on the camera. Yeah, there's no scripts on the camera, so um, there isn't any um, any gen any uh, sort of uh, interactions. You can add a camera script to it. Uh, but yeah, so it's a pretty cool terrain. Uh, if we uh, so anyway, so that's uh, that's the camera. Uh, it's just uh, right here. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, minus 70 on the Z. So I'm not sure if there's a... Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. And let's uh, bring it up a little bit higher. Um, I like to have the camera be like that. So you can zoom zoom in and out. Um, you just change the Y. Um, you, I mean, it's not what we're doing. We're changing the scale of the camera. Um, sort of like the... Um, let's see the... Yeah, depth? Yeah. Or no. Anyways, um... Yeah, there's you can do that uh, through it. And actually, uh, uh, orthographics. Yeah, an orthographic changer. You could change the size of the camera as well um, through the clipping plane or through the. Um, um, but I actually prefer the uh, um, perspective camera, which is sort of a 3D camera. That orthographic sort of like puts it into a. Um, anyways, and then from there you just um, 
you change I think you can you, I think you can drag this around yes yeah, so you can do like that's kind of the camera I like to have uh, so anyways that's just a simple script to uh, you know check the mouse input of the get axis uh, mouse wheel and then apply that to the Y uh, and then you just have the um, the horizontal and vertical axis being set to the X uh, right here yeah so set to the X and then set to the Z as well Oh, my mouse is gone uh, here so we can set the the camera to the Z as well uh, like that so then we get this sort of um, uh, RTS camera view uh, so let's talk about the terrain uh, the terrain is just a uh, mesh so it's it's um, it's pretty you know so you can see it here um, I guess well not really maybe we bring up a full there we go so your train is just a um, a square train piece it's got uh, 47,000 or 474,000 uh, verts so it's uh, just a it's just basically a flat um, uh, is that a it looks like a um, so it's basically a quad that's got the four corners but then it's got it's probably got individual um, let's see how do I do I turn off the train generation and then can I, would that regenerate the train um, yeah um, anyway so then you can see the water here is a um, sort of it's sort of a basic uh, filter oh no somehow it's um, Maybe if we turn off the entire. Um, oh yeah, that's not going to work. Uh, anyway, so that's actually just is um, this is the mesh right here, uh, which is just the terrain. So it's got a mesh renderer. Um, you've seen this a lot, and it's got a uh, a train element, which is this uh, blue color. Oops. Yeah. So, anyways, probably no. Don't want to mess with that. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, I'm not sure if that's messing with anything. Anyway, so it's just a it's uh, it's just a um, a unity um, terrain. Uh, you can go through and add height to the terrain, but uh, the question is, well, how does he add the height here? Uh, um, and at, that's part of this terrain generation, um, which is right here. So he's got this terrain generator, uh, and then you can sort of do the auto update uh, and calculate. There we go. Uh, and this is sort of like uh, he's talked a little bit about this. Uh, so you've got tiles, you've got land tiles, water tiles, uh, and then you can sort of refresh. You can say water is at, you know, 0, uh, and then refresh that, and it should, all the water should disappear at this point. Let's see if we can go into the, oh, no, 0. Um, anyway, so, oh, it seems to not, huh, point 0.1, no. Uh, must be doing something on the um uh, yes yeah, it's it's it, it's blocking the numbers uh anyway so the uh with some of the other things too is like you have a height sort of map um and these are sort of like the um so this is the idea is you have this um height uh at one for, and then sand is at point uh, five six, and then water is at point four. Uh, so it's sort of where you get this height differential from here, um, where you've got this. Um, let's see if we go into this uh, this view here. You can sort of see that this. So the water. Uh, there's not really a good way to get a hold of this um, clearly, uh, and they'll have a lot of clipping issues because of the camera. But uh, anyway, so you kind of see the the basic idea. Yeah, there's a lot of. Um, I think if you change the camera, does that work for this one? No, it's just because of the the clipping of the the um, the editor camera. Anyways, you can sort of see that the height is at uh, point you know point six five for the water, and then the uh, sand, and then um, I'm not sure it's it's almost like the yeah I don't like this because um, it's like you lose so much. Um, uh, partly it's because it's one you know you sort of select the object and you hit F, which sort of centers the camera on the object, so it tells it that it's a um, which is only a one by one by one, but then the terrain is actually because of the mesh right here. Uh, this is actually the mesh data, so it's like it tells you that that's how big the object is, uh, even though it's scaled one by one by one. Uh, and then you have this, you know, um, uh, and then I th you could actually, I think you could actually add in mountains and, you know, use the um, the actual uh, mesh editor, uh, including the new, um, you know, 2019. 
uh, and probably the two. I'm not sure you, if you could get up to 2019.3. Um, on Unity, you could add in all the cool, you know, mesh renderers. Um, anyway, so the train uh, is right here. We've been talking a little bit about this. Um, I believe uh, if we go in, so we we talk, we go into the script a little bit. Uh, we are actually these um, these numbers right here. Uh, we're editing is is the biomes. So people are asking about the biomes. This is sort of that biomes right here. So they have a height of the biome. The number of steps. I haven't quite figured that out, but I'm I'm assuming it's some sort of um, you know distance calculation between you because you can sort of see um, like uh, there's uh, sand has a sort of a, a number of like you know five or six steps or between I'm assuming that's sort of what this number is is like there's so many steps or so many tile differences between water um, and stand and then you can sort of see there's uh, dark sand as well uh, which is sort of like that's sort of this idea you look at sand uh, which, which we're focusing on you got this start style which is this light white um, and then it sort of um, uh, slides or sort of uh, um, has a a factor that goes into from you know 0 to 1.0 um, which is sort of just a sort of height map difference um, and that's where you get these dark cells and then same with the grass as this light to dark and then also with the water as well uh, you have this dark water to light water um, that's sort of it's really nice because it gives you this impression um, about the fact that these are shallow waters and then there's deep waters uh, little deep pockets here that are maybe really that's sort of like and that sort of envisions the idea that even though it, the water is at you know 0.5 or whatever in the height it's actually simulating that the water is actually um, you know a hundred feet deep or whatever your your um, your scaling factor is uh, so your you know your water is pretty deep uh, signified by the dark blue and I think these are just really nice colors that Sebastian chose um, because and and you know they're pre excuse me pretty standard throughout the sort of the world of like you know we see that um, it's sort of like you look at the eco and that's kind of a simulation aspect of this is you see these like this body of water doesn't have that dark blue because it's not it's like a small a small lake it gets down to maybe 20 30 feet depending on your scale here uh, you know and then you know and then so it's like um, and that's sort of like you could add another sort of layer here uh, to have sort of this really um, closer step um, like a two-step difference here where it's like really shallow where it sort of laps on the water um, and that's sort of like here where you can have this um, um, you know this this difference here where it's like you could sort of and you could sort of barely see that right here it's like you got this from here you got this first step to here so it's like a it's definitely a fading factor um, which is kind of what it's trying to do uh, anyway so these are uh, all these are just biomes or just this water biome uh, that's what the animals will come up and start drinking from them uh, and that's through that so these are these um, and this is just that um, this class since it's a system serializable class it means that you can and and you can look at the uh, let's see where uh, six references we go to the um, these these this is the uh, the train generation here, uh, we're, we're, we're not monsters, so let's uh, fix this. There we go. Woo! Much better. Anyway, so you can see the uh, train is actually just the mono behavior script, which sits on the uh, the game object, and then it runs the biome, which is um, this is pretty much like his planet generations and all the other things. Um, and then here's your height. You know, your height is from zero to one. So it's pretty much a, a height map, like with a noise filter. So you, you can kind of think of that as like, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, what's that famous term? There's, uh, yeah. Anyways, there's a, a, a noise filter out there that people like to, um, that sort of takes the numbers from zero to one. It sort of sets a, um, a height map. Um, I really wish I could think of that. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the biomes that we've got here. These are pretty straightforward. You can sort of see that they're, they're actually not, um, well, they're right here. So let's, we go into the water. Um, which is the definition here, and then we find all the definitions of water. It's actually pretty um, pretty simple here. Um, is this going to let us... I really wish it would have the uh, references on top of this, but I guess it would make it a lot of... There we go. Uh, so anyway, so it's like... Um, this uh, sort of like this is the colors, <laughs> the Britain color, uh, and it's like Britain color. Oh, I guess this is actually a class. Yeah, this is a Unity engine class. That's why it's a. So, anyways, this is kind of the idea. Uh, you have the start, the start color, uh, to a start color. Oh, that's water, sand, and grass, and then you got to the end color, 
and then you have these uh, colors uh, and this is the material so that's and the material sits on the object um, and that's sort of um, yes and the, so that also plays into this map idea as well that gets in a little bit more this is part of the environment but the terrain is just the idea that this is the terrain uh, and this is kind of like that uh, Anyway, this is the, um, the this is um, we've seen this before though. Exa this is almost exactly like the planet generator, uh, and it, it develops these maps. Like this is the the map of the terrain right here, as these float maps. Um, this is actually a pretty ingenious sort of way to do these sort of things. Um, this is the height map generator. Um, what it, you know? So this generates the height map. I think this is actually his. Yeah, this must be his class as well. So this is how he generates the height map. Uh, yes, this is definitely his. So here's the noise. Uh, Perlin, that's the word I was thinking about. It's it's just using the Perlin, you know, some sort of form of Perlin noise, uh, and it returns a map. Uh, the map is just simply that um, that uh, 2D array of floats. Uh, so you can sort of see this, like, that's sort of how this thing is built. Uh, if you sort of think about this in terms of... Um, you know, it's, it's like a... I don't know, you'd call it like the original Zelda games. Um, where it's like you have this, um, um, you know, like zero, uh, one, zero, uh, and then you have this uh, one, zero, uh, zero, and then let's do one more. Uh, we'll do one, zero, uh, one, uh, which is kind of like, so that's what the map looks like in a three by three dimension. But this is actually, um, you can see that his total dimensions here are massive. Um, and then, so it's like, um, you know, it's like that, it's that, it's massive, so it's like, you know, you know I don't know what that is, like, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 by 10,000 or something, and then two, it's like, it, this. these numbers are 0 0.25 to um, 0.5 to 0 0.75, um, you know, but it's it's between that zero and one uh, in that float. Um, you could use a single, uh, some sort of, um, I think there would be a nice, um, uh, variable, but as a float, it's uh, minus, you know, minus 27,000 to plus 20,000, you know, and so it's it's pr it's a pretty big number, but it's just um, they're good. Um, anyway, so uh, and it's sort of uh, anyway, so you have this, um, um, you know, a lot of these scenes, um, and this sort of you determine the min, um, this uh, the min this is the min max value. So here it is. It's uh, this is the max value of the float. Uh, which you actually set the min, so you set the min to the max, which is sort of that, um, you know, 3.8 trillion or whatever it is, uh, and then minus 3.8 trillion or 3.4, uh, which is the, uh, the you know, the constant um, of the float value. Uh, and then you're just sort of trying to define the, uh, the you know, the frequency and al uh, amplitude, um, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, we see, we can see if we can find a frequent, um, yeah. Frequency and amplitude. Amplitude. Uh, let's see if we can find just a. Yeah, so it's like that sort of. You get this sort of. Um, um, uh, like this is sort of the frequency is how often, and then the amplitude is how high it gets. Um, and then you've got this. So it's, it's actually interesting because that's all. You know, with radio waves, with everything, it's like it's just built on the same principle. That's kind of like where you get this. Um, the terrain is like you get this this bumpy sort of, um, and it's actually in a uh, step pattern. Uh, do we have a step pattern? Oh, sorry, my I'm yelling at everybody. Yeah, so it's like you get this step pattern right here because it's like you get this um, jagged terrain. So it's like, but your your step pattern is actually based on the point two seven of the terrain. So if you look in here. Um, it's just these, um, so it's like 0 0.41, 0 0.56, and 0 0.1. So it's like you got, um, zero is the dark water, uh, 0 0.41, um, is the, uh, sort of the midline of the, wa of the, the, actually, it could be the maximum maybe. So your in cell is the 0 0.41. So it's like, so 0 0.41 of your scale is the light blue. And then point, uh, point zero uh, might be your, your, you know, um, you know, or it might be put point. Yeah, it might be between zero and point four. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that's working, but and it's, it's probably between point zero and point four as your your sc sc scale step. So that's like you're you're going along uh, in this uh, dimension right here. So it's like here you are, and you go point four up on your dimension, and then that's from the point four down to here. It's like from here 
to here is, you know, so it's like you have, this is zero. Let's imagine this is the zeroth line. So it's zero to point 0.4. And then you've got this, that distance calculation between your um, your light blue and your dark blue. And it, I think it actually um, scales the, the color based on that value uh, uh, pretty much in here. Yeah, so the, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a alert between that, um, the, uh, the, you know, it's sort of like that, um, uh, yeah. And then you look at your size. Uh, does the size actually tell us? Um, oh, yeah, it only has one reference, so is the size actually going to tell us what the, um, yeah, number of tiles per line? Uh, world size, here we go. So the world size is actually, and it's actually only 20 by 20, so... Um, that's just your world size and sort of uh, the mesh. Um, I'm not sure if that's per the chunk distance. Anyway, so it's probably some sort of uh, value in there. So what these are, um, and then you could sort of see here some like the water edge and the edge depth. So these are kind of more values. Um, are these changed? I don't like when they're changed in the. Um... Oh yeah, here we go. So the world size is 334. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if that's it's 334. Uh, chunk size, I think, is sort of how it's thinking about it. Probably it could be 334, but I just, I'm kind of doubtful. And that would be like 334 tiles, but these are not per tile, I imagine. Um, they 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 seem like they are per tile, um, which is what I really like about this because I'm working off of tiles like this as well in my roguelike. So it's like I like the tile um, look, but that's sort of like in that step pattern uh, of how you sort of uh, envision envision this, where it's like you get this. Um, versus a um, like a very noisy it's sort of like kind of like this a little bit where it's like you got this um, you know you would actually have another um, you know from here to here to here to here and then this is zero to one um, it's not perfect but you know maybe sort of like you know this sort of uh, idea um, yeah uh, anyway so it's like you get that sort of uh, yeah I wish I had better graphs so it's kind of like um, Sebastian would have amazing grasp, but anyways, like you get this sort of uh, kind of reverse of this, where it's like you go from zero to one, and you know, have these different. Um, this is like you know tons of them, but I mean, I, I, I sort of like uh, there's probably like here maybe this is a better like you know this is sort of the example I'm looking at. It's like you have this z uh, one that that peters out to zero, and then you know that's your sort of um, level, and then these are you know but. Um, Hope that sort of makes a little bit of sense of what I'm talking about. Um, I know these these graphs don't line up, but that's sort of the idea here. Um, it's probably see like here's sort of this exact like another really great example um, of of sort of what it, you know you're looking at the math behind this, and then it's like um, I think in terms of how I think about it, like this is sort of like you see that sort of uh, sort of same thing. Um, these are definitely um, different. Ty they're sort of taking the the heat map or the, the map and they're trying to map it out or doing it different ways so um so yeah but i'm you know i'm kind of focused on over here where it's like you have uh i guess these are these are sort of i think they make some sense um you know so you can see that and that's the the, the perlin noise it's like you get that zero to one um where you you saw that's like that's sort of the perlin to the height map to the uh anyways uh so uh from there you know so we have these um uh and then the terrain is actually uh, right here is you have this uh, vertical, uh, you know, so the terrain data is sort of in these uh, triangles, um, which is like the normals and the verticals. Um, you can see, sort of see that all over the Internet, um, you know, and that's like right here where you have this mesh. Um, we saw that in the cave generation. We saw that in the, um, you know, it's basically taking a, 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 a mesh, you know, like a, a solid mesh piece and then up you know and having the setting the height of the mesh and that's why you get this really interesting um uh look here where you get the height um i actually use uh you know cubes this you know this would cost me you know <laughs> it actually would cost me uh it actually tells you right here um right here in the actually the terrain um right here this would actually cost me um that's uh 474 808 divided by four it would cost me 118,000 uh, tiles, and then that's times <laughs> times like eight. That would cost me not a million vertexes, but he's only um, and that's sort of it. It's like he's using the 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 mesh as the terrain mesh as one 
you know, like, um, and then you can sort of think about that in the same way as like, um, I, you know, so you would create this uh, little, uh, you know, example mesh uh, right here, and then you'd create the 3D object as the cube, uh, and then I have this at point one uh, right here, uh, and then you can kind of look at this as like that's sort of the uh, we are we oh, yeah, here we go. Let me, um, bump this out so that's the object that we're looking at and does that fit yeah so that fits and we have a we have this offset by 0.5 I think just because that's standard you know um, standard uh, and then so you can sort of see like that's um, yeah that's, well, well this is actually quite quite tall is it one I don't know it's almost like two um, it probably doesn't yeah 1.1.5 it's not going to scale exactly correctly but it's sort of the general idea, and then this would be down by 0.75, or minus 0.75. Uh, but then, so that's one um, sort of tile, and then this is by, uh, you know, 1500 by 1500, and then this is uh, 7500, 750 by 750. Yeah, there we go. And you can see how massive this is actually is. Um, yeah. Oh no, it's okay. It's not that big. Um, 150 by is it? Oh, I bet it's 334. Ah, just a wild guess. Oh no, 334. Uh, anyway, so the number 334 is his uh, train size, and then you half that. Uh, what is that? 334 divided by two. Don't do math on kit on uh, screen. Is uh, 167. Uh, we need to. It's it's not going to line up perfectly, but yeah, there we go. So, um, I think it, it is it off by 0.5, or did we actually account for that? Anyway, so that's his uh, his terrain. Basically, is that piece of terrain right there uh, has has terrain size. Oh, we got the 334 right here, and then the water depth to 0.5, and the edge depth, and all this other stuff. Um, and then so that's the um, you know we don't we don't need the box render, but we have this uh, cube, which is actually a right here. Is, this is 24 verts um, because this sort of cube is stretched. Uh, and scaled, but that's sort of the idea is that these um, these terrain pieces are, um, you know, these individual, um, you know, like so here's this this vertex is right here, so it's like a, a quad, which is probably divided down. That you can you can see that all the time. Like if I uh, created a 3D object, a Q a, a quad, uh, yeah, and we'll just say like minus five minus five, and look at the quad. You can see the quad is sort of um, oh, and then we have to uh, uh, minus 90 or 90 and then uh, you can I don't think we can see can we see the quad yeah so then here's the the quad right there uh, is like that that square and it's cut in half uh, and then so it's um, and that's sort of uh, just you know you know boring details but this is um, the left hand rule I think or whatever so it's like uh, 0 1 and 2 and then um, 2 you know 2 3 and 0 or, or you know, or zero, one, three, and two, and then you could have, um, you know, and that's R if you have the separated. Uh, anyways, uh, Sebastian has tons of videos on, on this as well. So he's, you know, it's sort of like, um, and that's why this terrain right here on this quad has these. Uh, no, not this one. Uh, his, uh, it has. Um, no, no, that's the actual. Um, um, yeah. Oh, this is the material, uh, or the, uh, yeah, it's just the material. Um, oh, no, is this the one? No. Come on. Oh, here it is. I found it. Now I'm panic. Oh, that wasn't it either. Oh, it's the mesh. <laughs> and so the mesh is actually the, um, that's the data, is we're, we're, we're editing, we're sort of editing the mesh data uh, right here. Uh, when, when you set the vertex, the, the vert and that's also the UV, so, uh, and that's all that sort of data uh, as well. Uh, anyway, so then we have all that mesh data. We create the um, the mesh data, uh, and then we update the colors based on the um, the color of, you know, the, the things. Um, and then we got the biome info. Uh, anyway, so let's, um, we talked about, uh, we're sort of where we are in the, um, the environment. So let's, uh, let's go on from, the, from there to the environment. Where did I stuff that piece of Hello? oh there here we are this is what I'm looking for anyway so we have uh, 334 of these um, float uh, things uh, 
let's go into the environment. So, because we'll, that's sort of we'll talk, you know, we're going to move on from there. Um, so that's uh, hopefully people can see that's how we get to this sort of terrain-looking object. Um, let me um, let me take out um, let me take out mine. Uh, so that's how we get from this this single. Um, you know, you can do the same thing by just going um, create 3D object terrain uh, right here, and there you go. Uh, and then so this is um, I think this is is this a this actually might just be a, um, is this a mess object? This might be a sort of just a simple, um, uh, oh, let's see, no. I think I can get, yeah, maybe not. Come on. Sorry. I'm not sure why, my, oh, it's, I think it's freaking out. It's like, you can't do that. I'm like, no, really. Okay. Oh boy. Here, uh, anyways, uh, what the train was talking about, but you, could, but you may not be able to edit the train in that way because of, um, yeah. There we go. Uh, do we have a. Um, I was wondering. No, there's the fox. Yeah. There might be a terrain object that's actually like a mesh object that he's created. Um, he could have created that in code. Um, um, yeah, here's our new terrain that we don't need because, yeah, that's the one we created. Yeah, so he does have a terrain generator here that he's running in editors. So he might have run this through. The, the, yeah, so this is probably how he... Well, I think that's actually, if you look, that might actually be the uh, terrain right here, because he has a, um, the terrain generator here, and that, that uh, is actually how he gets the, um, the um, 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 that's how he gets the refresh button here, probably. But if we look at that, we'll see the uh, refresh button. Uh, this is the editor code right here. Uh, here, let me, I can't see. Yeah, so here's the refresh button, and then it just says generate, and then generate. But why it forces the um, the numbers back is uh, beyond me. There's probably something in here that says you can't do that. But anyway, so um, yeah, it's probably all these are set through that. Um, anyway, so that's sort of like this runs is through the um, through the refresh uh, through the the ten, the editor, and it also runs the refresh uh, through the um, oh the uh, needs update, not to update, and stuff like that. So. Um, and then yes, and then updates the colors and stuff like that. Yeah, anyway, so it's uh, it's a long and short is how we get to this environment. Uh, it's either it's probably it's probably more like a generated mesh data object instead of the terrain data. Even though he's calling it terrain, it's probably not the terrain um, like the Unity engine, uh, and that probably saves him a lot of overhead as well. Uh, is he's just editing a sort of a piece of the. Um, uh, you know, and you could actually include, you know, like the marching cubes and all the other data into this, um, the planet as well. That's what I'd really love to do is sort of see this terrain data be implemented into the planet data. So it's like you can have this individual tiles of the planet be generated. Um, but anyway, that would be a little bit more complicated because of the, the, the um, sphere. Um. So anyways, we got these flat tile, um, these f sort of flat maps. Um, this is sort of just like a 2D, uh, like a 2D array is all this really is. Um, but if we, so let's, um, let's, so let's look at the map, I guess. That might actually be a, um, a good idea because the map really is the, um, is the idea of, of this object. And the map, it doesn't really have anything. Um, it has the, uh, the vector two of the centers, and then it has a, a list map of the living entities, uh, which is sort of, you know, so it's like in by in regions. Uh, this is actually where you get regions. Um, I would call these chunks because um, I'm sort of familiar with a Minecraft chunk. Let's see if we can get a, a good visual of a Minecraft chunk. Um, but uh, it's uh, and I, I say that a lot, and I think people are like Minecraft. What's that? Uh, it's just notch. It's just the one of the most you know um, chunk uh, example. Uh, one of the most influential programmers ever. So, uh, yeah, so this is kind of like a, 
uh, horrible resin. So this is what a chunk looks like. Um, it's a 16 by 16. Um, I think it's a 15 by 15 in Minecraft. I, I don't like it because it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's a uh, prime number or something. <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah, so these are kind of like more like what biomes look like and is here is you got this um, this shaded area of, of the biome, but the chunk is actually doesn't care because it's set uh, right here. It's like this is your chunk area. Uh, can we get a viewer? And it's actually, um, I noticed one thing that's different about this area. Yeah, like right, this is a chunk and this is a chunk, but this isn't a chunk because it's um, there's um, and this is these are not chunks in fact um, this so sort of they're 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 like that but chunks are actually they don't care uh, normally they don't care about what what's under them it's just a um, it's how the uh, the world's loaded you can see that in Minecraft is like um, yeah it's sort of like this idea as well is um, yeah well that's sort of a different idea but um, yeah is there a way to show a bad chunk loading? Yeah, anyways, this is like what a chunk would look like. It's sort of like you get this... Um, see, it doesn't care. It just cuts out whatever it is. Um, and, you know, this is, you know, one chunk survival. These are... This is pretty cool where it's like... But it just gives you from... And this is like where it... Oh, from the bedrock all the way to the sky level. So this is down, you know, maybe at negative 256 to positive 256 would be the chunk. Um, and they're 15. This is like this is an example of maybe three chunks. So here's one chunk, second chunk, and a third chunk. And these are maybe subdivided in sub chunks, but that doesn't really matter. Um, so that's what his regions are sort of talking. I think are talking about is these ideas. Let's see if I can find a bad um, Minecraft not loading chunks. Uh, you can see these on these. Yeah, so like on these really bad. Like here's a really good example of like here's a an area where it's like it's just not loading well this is kind of a this is what it looks like but you can sort of see here like these worlds loaded in and this is kind of a bad but you can see right here it's sort of it it's sort of half loaded this chunk but you can see right here is here's a chunk second chunk third chunk fourth chunk fifth chunk is sort of like the you know this sort of this square size um, uh, yeah, so let's see if we can see some better. I mean, it's sort of this is sort of what it looks like uh, right here. Uh, where's that? Yeah, so like this is kind of what it looks like. But then these these uh, caves are sort of a separate chunk. But and two, it's like this this flat chunk up top is like the the surface chunk where it's like rendering everything above. And these could be entities as well that are not part of the chunk. I don't think that's how it works. But um, yeah, um, yeah, like here it's like this is a well, like, this is, like, it seems strange, but you, you have to think of, like, this is a 3D representation, but this is the face of the chunk. So it's, like, even though it looks like it's in 3D, the chunk is, like, right here and right here, and it's, like, it's it's up and down, and it's, it's like, you have to rotate this almost, like, um, 75 degrees or something like that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I think he's talking about is in these regions is, like, you get this... Um, um, this really chunk like here's a really good example it's like it just cuts out the chunk from the bedrock which is like probably where this is um, all the way up to the top it's actually probably interesting the new minecraft probably doesn't um, you know the bedrock goes down below uh, it may not um, but it may just be void which either teleports you to somewhere else or kills you um, there may not be nothing but there's that's kind of like in unity uh, right here you look out here, you see like the gray worldness, and there's nothing, you know, goes forever. But in your game, you can't. You sort of limit this. So, um, so these are probably. Um, so it's anyways. The regions are square uh, because of the the map what we're talking about here. This uh, in the environment. I think we caught. This is a three by three chunk that I'm talking about, um, and that's a flat, you know, flat surface as well. There's no height. Uh, in in this in Minecraft, there's we have these heights, but just that's how you get the, the depth in Minecraft. But there's no actual height, uh, and you can actually see too that there's the um, the Perlin noise that we're sort of seeing here is that um, that there's a, some sort of um, it's, it's a lot more complicated too with the Minecraft um, where you have this height uh, as well. So the, they have this uh, water 
sort of fits in where this where it thinks it wants to fit and probably has all sorts of and then you got sand and you know it's all it's sort of very and then like rock um more like the bedrock up to a certain level is sort of like you get the rocks and then it's it probably has and then you get sand to to to, to, to um to um um sorry dirt I was thinking, no, I was trying to think of grass, but it's not. But anyways, and then the grass. In Minecraft, the grass actually sits on top of the dirt. Uh, you can sort of see, like, here's your dirt, and then they have this top layer of, um, um, of sort of thing. Uh, anyway, so that's sort of like, that's a little bit different in our example, um, because you can see here where it's like we're looking at this uh, green section here. Uh, can, like, yes, we can see this. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we get this green section here. It's always green. Uh, we could actually have a, a separate layer for our dirt. Um, in my game, I actually have this point one sort of level, and then all down from there is dirt. And you can sort of think about it like that. But anyway, so that's sort of these these maps um, work out to your terrain height that we talked about. And we also have this um, entity height, uh, which is kind of like a uh, we need uh, one more. I was trying to separate this out, but this would actually be a, a 0, 1, 2, um, 3. Uh, zeros represent nothing. Ones, uh, and this is sort of where you get this this population, um, which is actually, yeah, it's a struct. So you get these sort of population, and here's like this walkable. So here's that same exact, uh, you have these walkable maps as well. So you have this map, and then you have this um, uh, 1, 1, one and this map right here uh, relates to these these are the exact here let's see if I can get this sort of um, yeah there we go so these maps are there's a correlation between these maps now the one here and the one here doesn't mean the same thing this is true um, this is true um, which contrary to popular belief uh, these are all false um, you know, zero is false. Um, oftentimes, um, I people, I don't, I'm not sure. There really needs. To, we, I was talking to my brother about this. There was a coding mishap where some people are like, "No, zero is true," and it's like, "No, zero is not," or you know, false. And anyway, so these are. This is one in code, but it actually is just true, uh, which is sort of. Um, well, I guess you could actually think about it the exact opposite. I guess. Um, in this case, um, where it's like it is the false are walk. You know, I'm trying to say that these are walkable. So I think in the in the actual in the actuality, um, I would probably do it like this, um, uh, because uh, we're we're talking about is this walkable? Um, uh, true. I want to reverse all these. And anyway, so just the idea here is that we have this uh, this other map that's sort of like uh, the true is it's uh, that's sort of like the um, the um, um, the uh, brum -bum -bum a star where it's like you have the a star it's like you have the same sort of node map path that these are the nodes that are their path you know these are zero 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 one zero two you know zero and then one one zero one 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 two you know it's like you got this x y map of the where and these are just the walkable so that's also where you can see these walkables are in these that's and right here these are the bulls so it's like that's why it's like and this is uh walkable yeah so it's it is walkable it would be false so it's not walkable and walkable would be true yeah so it, it's walkable would be true in this sense of the word so I, this, this would be i like to do um the exact opposite sometimes but um but yeah so it's like um you know but anyway so um and it's like sort of the, the difference between, you know, what, what makes sense to the human versus what makes sense to the computer. Um, it really doesn't matter to the computer, um, but th these are just zeros and ones. Um, these are actually probably more like um, is a struct of bools, which is actually just a uh, immutable sort of, um, uh, it has this, it's this you know, all this data attached to it as well. So um, these are like this true string is actually a, um, a, a, f a functional return. Um, and then the data is actually, um, I'm not sure really where it is, um, but there's some data, there's data, data objects here that converts um, what the object actually is. Um, you can, and so it's, it has all these, yeah, so it's just a, um, uh, I'm not sure what it, where are the actual, there is a piece of data here that actually confirms 
what the data actually is. Um, I don't see that exactly here. It doesn't jump out at me, but there's actually data that, that probably says zero or one. Um, it probably could be could be convertible to something else. But anyways, there's a maybe internally there's a piece of data that says um, that it's zero or one basically, um, and then it just converts that you know zero is false and one is true, um, or it could you know so uh, the hash it's not the hash code. Uh, the hash code is something sort of like internal to the um, the I comparables need the hash code because you're trying to compare the hash, which is the actual ID of the code. Uh, anyway, so that's sort of the uh, the Boolean value, the walkable. That's sort of where you get this idea where the um, where the, um, the, the the where the where the critters can walk. So that's where you don't get the critters walking on top of each other, and then they can like if a tree. Uh, is is not walkable and that's sort of a, is a grass a grass is probably walkable um, because you're sort of sitting on top of the grass even though it's like it's underneath you but it's it's sort of you sort of and then rocks are sort of in my game rocks are not walkable but sometimes you can think about well someone's standing on top of this rock or you know and I think it's just easier if the rocks are not or if not walkable and then you can sort of mine right next to the walk because the, they're a little bit more um, uh, larger anyways we got this seed uh, the seed is sort of like based on this height map generation. Uh, population, we haven't talked about as well. Let's go into the population. The population is actually pretty simple uh, under the environment. Uh, it's sort of like the biomes, but it's sort of the uh, biomes. So you can see we have two populations. Um, one's the bunny and one's the fox. Um, the population is actually just, I think they're, oops, here, let me, uh, they're just critters, uh, I think is how it's sort of uh, the subclass. Uh, no, I live in NTC, sorry. Uh, it's just a living entity. I call them critters, but there is basically that actually makes a lot of sense because it's just a living entity. So this is sort of where you get the idea. A living entity is just, it actually has um, something that has a coordinate. Uh, the coordinate is actually what he actually came up with on his own. Uh, this is sort of like the X. You can call this a vertex two, but he was talking about that he was having trouble with vertex right here. Uh, the vertex to int, which was causing slowdowns and big loops, uh, because you're running 10,000, you know, he's running 10,000 pieces a day, or 334, uh, so it's 334, um, I don't believe that, but it's 334 by 334, so he's or he's running over 111,000 no data elements, so that's like, I'm like, I'm trying to showcase this as a 3 by 3, uh, or, you know, 2 by 2, 0, 1, 2, uh, map, but it's actually, um, you know, it's 11,000, what was that number? Oh, shoot, I lost it. Uh, oh, sorry. How are we on? Ah, oh, we're barely an hour. We're good. Uh, it's 334 times 334, so it's uh, 11,000, uh, 11,000 by 11,000, which is sort of, that's the, um, the map. Uh, so it's 11,000 data pieces, 11,000. Uh, 110,156 data elements. So, and that's like not even including, that's the, uh, the map uh, right here. So there's 11,000, you know, 110,000 vertex twos, 110,000 um, uh, walkable terrain right here as well. Uh, right here so you have the walkable is a hundred and then I think if you look at this uh, go to different or go to actually go to the uses uh, there is a hundred eleven thousand coordinates I think we pass through the size yeah at some point we pass through the size yeah here right here so the terrain data dot size um, is that can we actually get the size of this Let's see if we can actually um, attach to unity Oh yeah, run, go, buddy. Um, I think is this this could be 334, or it might be. Um, I think it's actually going to be. Yeah, here we go. We are actually. Uh, yeah, so so it is 334. Um, so it's 334. So it's not that bad, but um, um, yeah, I guess that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I guess that could actually. Um, um, yeah, so it's just the terrain, which is actually, I, I was mistaken that this is actually just a piece of terrain. That's a class. Um, yeah. And then it creates the size right here, and then, yeah, so. Um, I was just thinking, like, is this really, um, you know, is this, you know, you know, 1, 2, to 334 is my question. And it, it possibly could be. Um, 
Uh, it just doesn't feel like it, but um, maybe that's per chunk. You know, maybe there's 334 chunks in these, re you know, or regions that he's calling them. So 334, 334, 334 to, you know, to whatever. Um, anyway, so, but, I mean, it's really the central, the same thing. I think it probably is based on regions. Um, but anyway, so the, the living entity is just, it just has a coordinate, um, and then it has the map index. The map index uh, is just sort of that, uh, it's a really complicated number. Uh, bum 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 well, how do we get the index? Yeah, okay, so it's just the list of the yeah, S. So this is the list of the index. Um, there's a complicated formula for this. It's a, uh, what is it? Oh, no, I, yeah, I'm right, Google. How, Google, how do I get to Google? Uh, the 2D array... Uh, index value. Uh, da, 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 da. It's actually a pretty, it's it's like, it's not just, it's, see, it's like, it's not X plus Y, but it's X um, C sharp 2D index uh, value. Yeah, here we, I think this might be it. Mm, yeah, so it's like, um, there's a way to convert one to the other. Yeah, so it's kind of this, how you convert this one to the other. I think it's, um, I should really write this formula down because I always screw it up. I think it's, um, um, the value equals X, um, X plus Y times the, uh, the, 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 the width and, and something like that. See, uh, anyway, so you can, like they're talking about here, you can get the, the length. This is actually the matrix, which is the uh, x, the 2D array, and you get the length of zero, which is the width, and the, get the length of the height. So that's 334 by 334, and then you can. Um, this is kind of getting that that width and height, which is sort of we're going through that array, and then we're uh, we're sort of. This is actually just a simple sort of way to say, you know, what's the actual, um, you know, we're trying to we're rising through, but there's actually a way to say. Um, yeah, this is not actually kind of what we're looking for. It's it's just a really simple value. Um, yeah, is this the one? This pro oh, no, I don't want to. Do I have to sign in? Oh yeah, who cares? Well, Microsoft really. There's a problem with uh, something about it. it was like a, a Beth Bethesda like made all their um, dooms. Uh, Anyways, there's yeah, there's a way to get the the actual uh, index. Um, so, but we're we're just trying to get the, the that index value here, which is kind of like um, this is maybe because it's a list value here. He can get the uh, the region x y, uh, and that's sort of like I guess that's sort of it. This is actually um, the coordinate x y is that coordinates um, the eleven thousand the hundred and ten thousand divided by the region size, and his region size is uh, what does it tell us? The region size is that's kind of like that chunk size that it's in Minecraft it's like 15, but in here it's probably something different. Um, can we get that value? Yeah, here's the scale, so it's based on the scale as well. So it's like your, um, yeah, here. So here's that here's that 111,556 we were calculating before. That's that number right there because that's the total, um, the total number of uh, tiles. So that's that's how many tiles there are in the world. So it's 334 regions. Uh, can we actually take this number? Here, let me. I think we actually. Oh no, we don't have that. Here, let me. Um, so it's this number divided by 334. Oh, it's 334. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So each region is 334, and there's 334 regions is basically uh, I think how it's working so and I sort of like uh, it's sort of taking the, the the heat map or the local map of the area I say heat map a lot a heat map is sort of like what we're talking about um, it's it's sort of like it just kind of talks about the same idea um, heat map uh, you can see it a lot of time um, it's just sort of like a uh, uh, it's sort of like a yeah it's um, just a, a peen of the word it sort of gives you Oh, I don't know. it just gives you a value of like what's what's happening around the 
Um, this is kind of a heat map overlaid on the world on this one right here where I'm highlighting with the, the Europe. Um, but it's sort of like this idea. Um, and it's sort of like the idea where you can just correlate your heat maps to this is a really dark area. Uh, it could be the actual, this is really the opposite, but it's, I feel like this is the really dark, this dark red here. So that's where the, the map is sort of centralized. Uh, and this sort of kind of what it looks like. That's kind of why I call it a heat map a lot because it's like, it sort of gives me that same impression. Uh, you can sort of see too, it's like, this is sort of like a terrain, like these red areas might actually be, um, you know, the map is, this is kind of more a, a higher width than height, but, um, but yeah, it's just, it just gives you a very, specific color or very specific uh, data and that's like you see this a lot and um, um, you know um, yeah and this heat map is sort of also as well is where you can see of the this sort of the um, you, you know you can think of human gives off heat but then where where other people are not it gives off the cold area so it actually works for so many different things um, um, but yeah so it's kind of like and this sort of like this idea this is what it looks like here uh, is that's why it's like it's a very set directional uh, that's kind of why heat map is such a you see it a lot of times in games where it's like you you run into you know how many um, um, you know you go to this uh, here's a hex based heat map as well so it's like it it's sort of based on what you're doing uh, and it's sort of like this is sort of a very fluid one but you can also make it a whoops you know I may say that you can make it a hex map you can make it out of the tiles um, you can have these are very like polygonal ones where it's like it's not very um, central but this is kind of what we're looking at here it's like we have the white areas uh, or the light areas and then the dark dark gray like this is really high uh, but so it's like if this is like a, could be like a, a health pack and the, you know it's like everybody goes to that health pack but then this is kind of where conflict happens a lot you can see that in uh, um, uh, first person shooters a lot so sort of and this is sort of as well as like these sort of centric zones of something's happening there um it's sort of to the computer and this one's pretty noisy but it's sort of very similar thing where it's like uh yeah and then here's the and this one's actually kind of much more you can see like the the one you know the low 100s there's obviously a scale that's like that 6.7 scale comes into this is actually you can divide this whole thing by 100 and it's like you get this sort of you know 1.1 you know 1.2 or something and then over here you still get this you know 5. Point, you know or 6.2 and then you all the way up to and it's sort of like here's your scale is like three you know you know uh, 400 or 600 here all the way down to you know 100 um, it's sort of like where you get that scale factor and here's another one where it's like you get that sort of uh, scale factor in the the one to two uh, all the way up to this, you know, the 15, and you got these different. Anyway, so that's kind of like what this is doing. Uh, you've got this map is just the. Uh, this is probably the regional map. Yeah, so it's. Uh, this is 334. Uh, so the map map is three uh, 334 by 334, which is a 334 region. Um, so that's where you get these these uh, you know the t it's like basically a chunk each chunk is 334 tiles wide and then you're looking in that general this is sort of like you're looking in that general area for you know for mates for food as well that's um uh anyways on the, the environment you also have the um a lot more as well um in terms of um uh the population you also have the uh you know the tile um the walkable um, a various, um, I'm not sure where the, uh, yeah, so here's the water map as well. Here's the, um, the array of visible tiles from any tile, which is the coordinate. Um, uh, so it's like looking for the water. Uh, it's sort of like you're sort of trying to, uh, yeah, here's the prey map and plant map. So that's why this map is such a valuable class because it's sort of, it gives you the map of living entities, which could be, I think plants um, are plants. How do we get plants? Uh, plants might be actually part of a living entity as well. Um, yeah, it's just a plant map. So, um, um, so you know, that's sort of like the idea where uh, where we're getting. That's where we first started, where we got that crashes because we were trying to set up a. Um, yeah, here's the tree. So that we got the tree data, uh, and then eventually we'll have a plant data here. Yeah, so the plant map is a, uh, 
Oh, yeah, so the oh, it's plant is just a plant. So and a plant, I bet I bet a plant is just a li yeah. So a plant is just a living entity. So it's sort of like you go into the living entity, which is the base class, which is just a mono behavior. But that actually runs the um, you can see the animal as well as runs the living entity as well. So that's like that's like the big question people are asking. Well, what where's the fox? It's you know you should add in a diet for the fox, and you should add in. A lot of that stuff as well but then you can see here that the the plant um, well these are based on the, the plant but the plant is basically and it's sort of like like here's the diet and let's like sort of see where you have a, a, a heart and this is actually where you could actually add an omnivore uh, omnivore as well you know so what's an omni you know so a herbivore is eats plants a carnivore eats meat so what's an omnivore so if we pull up how handy Google, an omnivore is a collection of every single universe. Oh, no. no, no, omnivore. Oops, my bad. Vore. Come on. Omnivore is an animal or person that eats food of both plant and animal origin. So that's like a, a sort of that idea. Did I actually spell omniverse? No. Oh, I see. I'm... Anyway, so an omnivore, which is a meat and herb or meat and plant eating uh, some some dinosaurs were like that as well. So, and then here's your diet. Uh, it's sort of like this idea. Um, so so the foxes do have that. You know they it wasn't showcased very well, but the foxes actually do have this. Um, oh, it's just a diet. Yeah. So the diet. Uh, I don't like how this uh, works. Um, I think that these should be like this um, because that makes a lot more. But these are subclasses of animals which have their actions. And then their diets, uh, which is, but then this sort of gets in this. Uh, this really should be. Um, I have this under a namespace eco, uh, eco, um, ecosystem or something. This should all really be under a namespace because then it would not, you know, not oops, uh, not mess with a lot of code here. But under the ecosystem, then you actually have. Uh, this is probably how I'd clean up some of this code as well. Um, but anyways, you have these um, these diet and these creek reactions. And so the diet is just, this is what they're eating. So if we see their reference to here, uh, basically it's just we're asking what, um, what oops, no, find all references. We're just asking, oh, there isn't a, there's probably a way to reference this is, but it's just asking like when, when like, it's like, you know, you can actually make your bunnies, uh, you can change your bunnies into omnivores. So they'll go start hunting down wolves. <laughs> and it's like, rawr, you know, something terrible happened when humans messed with the bunnies. So they're, you know, man-eating bunnies uh, by just changing them into onivores. There's, this is actually not programmed in the game, but uh, you would just, um, you would just uh, sort of have to see. Uh, and here's that view distance as well. Uh, it's the base. I bet. The, oh no, it's a const. So there isn't. A, it's not changed here. So this is a. Um, a, uh, so their their base act and these you can sort of make this they're they're actually not a const as well, which is actually would be pretty cool. So then you could come in here, um, and I think that would actually give us the ability to come in here and then um, oh under the environment, and then come in here and hopefully compile you. Oh, oh is that not going to give us? Um, is that because of the? Oh, these are actually. I'm sorry. These are actually. Um, no! What have I done? Oh, I see the problem. Yeah, because we're actually doing uh, animals, so we have to do... Yes. Okay, yeah, so... Anyways, we'd have to fix that, because uh, we would need a... the. This is actually based on the base, so we'd actually have to sense a... Um, um, aren't we... Are we in it? No, this is the environment, so we'd actually have to somehow come in... And give us a um, who's actually asking for this? Yeah, part of the animal. So we'd actually have to pass in the. Um, do we have that? Yes, we'd actually have to pass in our um, max view distance here uh, to sort of make this work. Would probably be one way to do that. So then we come in here. Um, uh, basically, so then we have uh, view or you know view distance. Uh, here, let me. So I tend to like to write code like this because um, and then under animal we would actually want to do um, basically where I'm, I'm trying to say at this point like hey 
Uh, I'm not sure if that's a capital C. Uh, I think it's a lowercase C. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so basically, we're trying to make this so eventually now. Um, here, let me fix one. That's why the prefab broke, right? This is what this means is this broke because it's not compiling. Let me, I think. Yeah, anyways. Oh, uh, and then I would have to pass in... Um, uh, what are we, are we sensing our action? Oh, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, no, we're, yeah. Oh, the view distance, yes. Oh, no, the uh, max, sorry, the max view distance, right? Yeah, see, since we're in the animal command, so this is on the gizmo. Uh, so, one more fix, and, oh, yeah, oh, the uh, view radius of, are we... Mm. Yes. Oh, this guy should be current. Um. Uh, this is the. Hmm. This actually could be a little more complicated than I want it to be. We need a local reference to the animal, and I'm not sure how to get that. I can fix this. Not really. Uh, that's why I, I, sometimes it's hard to make changes because it's like, oh no! Well, aren't we just asking the... Um, um, oh, who's, who's our local reference? I feel like our, our prey map or our plant map would be the local reference, but we're sort of... Um, distance ascending closest water tile. Yes, yeah, so we need a local reference here to our view distance. This is based on an assumption that the, the, the all. So I'm trying to make it so that the animals have um, variables like uh, bunnies have seven sight distance and foxes have ten sight distance. Um, but the problem there is this is not based this is sort of based on a set um a set distance and the um in the um uh we're actually in the this is actually in the uh, the environment has a set distance instead of per animal it's you know it's like um which is probably not how I'd want to do that but um yeah oh sorry I'm pretty ocd about code Anyway, so you can see here is our, oh, this is uh, the initial populations. These are the ones we're actually trying to change here. Um, I th think we can, act, yeah. Well, mm, one thing we could actually do um, is sort of say like the int view radius equals 10, uh, and that will fix. Um, I think that will actually leave a bug in the code because we're, we're assuming a sort of a distance of, of um, Anyways, that should actually now compile. So now we actually see, now we actually get the uh, the view radiance of the bunnies to seven, like I was talking about. And then we can actually set the view radiance of foxes to, um, hey, fox, you, fox, hello, you don't have a, foxes don't have a, maybe I was lying. There isn't a view radius. What? How does the you? Huh? Hmm. That's strange. Anyways, it's getting about about an hour and a half of video, so it's going to take a long time to upload. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's been you know, a few more minutes. Uh, anyway, so we've gone through. Um, we can see, oh, there isn't a, uh, the, oh, the initial population is not here. Yes, yeah, so we need, like, a third uh, object here. Bunny plant. Okay, so then we add in a, here, let me add in a, um, oh, well, look at this. Let's do 25. Uh, a thousand, and here, let me, um, add one more, um, 
Oh, no, come on. Hey, no, there we go. Yeah, see, that's the a problem here is the fox. Uh, anyway, so I'm 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 debating whether or not the uh, the fox should add the animal behavior. Um, I thought that's you know I assumed it did so. Um, so there we so it's actually let's make it a carnivore. Uh, remember we don't have omnivore actually set up. Uh, we we're just talking about this. Uh, yes, let's, I, was, I was thinking about getting through their current action. So um, I it's pretty much talked about in the video. Um, so okay, so now that we have that fixed, we can actually go through the. Um, the environment and go through the project and now we can actually because this is a list of animals now we actually have set up the fox and we can actually fit because the fox wasn't an animal it uh, couldn't set it up like that oh, and we uh, forgot to set let me set one more variable um, we'll set foxes to I don't know five anyways this is some of that balancing features here now that we have you know tons of plants tons of bunnies um, they actually should now show up in the world um, at some point. Ooh. Okay, so now, anyways, you can see we have plants now, right here. Uh, and then we actually have bunnies now. Um, so, under our hierarchy, oh yeah. Woo! Yeah, here's a serious bug. <laughs> it's not a bug, it's a uh, feature! Anyways, uh, Unity is not a very fan of putting everything into one single massive list like this. Uh, anyway, so then we can actually look at our foxes. Um, not sure why. Um, yeah, so now our foxes are actually out in the world. Uh, we need the sort of a camera better. Uh, anyway, so that's sort of there was the problem with the why the animals weren't generating as well. So uh, anyway, so I'm not sure why. There's probably another problem here about why they're not. Um, let me look through. Anyway, so we set up the initial population map. Oh, here, let me show the map debug. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, anyway, so this is kind of exactly what I was talking about. Um, you can see now that this is a, a chunk area here. And this is the center of the chunk. So this is like, so it doesn't really care. The biome of the water biome doesn't actually care about the chunk or the region, as they're called. Um, other thing, too, I wanted to point out... Um, these are not perfect regions because over here you can see that there's a dead region over here where the environment is not set up to be inclusive to the uh, the max uh, region. Uh, I think it's actually, does it happen on both? Yeah, on both ends. So, so obviously there needs to be a way for this to be, um, there, you know, add like, you know, um, I don't know how many ever uh, items there are here. Um, so, yeah, and then... Um, yeah, see, it, I prefer this to, you know, um, anyway, so you can see, like, that's, you can see all the the regions that he's talking about here, uh, based on the environment, and that's just a little debug feature down here, um, uh, the map view distance, um, yeah, and here's the map view right here, so here's the map view objects, so this is sort of like uh, eventually setting up this idea that we can have a, uh, let's see if we can set this to one, um, this is sort of like that viewable distance in the map, and I, let's see if that would actually change so we, what we can actually see. Uh, no. I think that's part of this idea that eventually you can't, you need to sort of eliminate what you can't see. Uh, and that's why it sort of gives you this, that's why Minecraft loads in these chunk data. Uh, anyways, uh, let's go on to there. Let's talk about the, uh, the, um, uh, the population, uh, well, let's talk about the animals. Yeah, let's go to the animals. Um, uh, anyway, so everything's a population. No, population is actually just a. Um, uh, so population is just a living entity, and a count. Uh, so that's why we, we have the original. We had the plants and the um, bunnies, and we just increased the population to three. Um, and we couldn't add the prefab because the fox wasn't an animal prefab. So we just set the uh, set the animal prefab, which is a a subclass of the living entity. Uh, which is a subclass of just a mono behavior, so it's just expecting that. So this is also included, so this is like uh, plants, uh, bunnies, you know, one, bunny one, uh, which is kind of a subclass of the uh, bunny type, and then the uh, fox. Uh, you can also have a dog, cat, you know, rodent, uh, any number of uh, things here. And you can also have, um, I think, trees, uh, and then rocks, 
um, any number of things. Uh, even though rocks are not living entities, it's sort of like the sort of where it gets kind of a little like living entity. That's why I, um, it's just a, it's just basically um, where it is. Like this is the um, this is the actual coordinate is probably the uh, local coordinates, and this is probably the uh, regional coordinates. Um, regional coordinates. Uh, you can think of this as like the this is the coordinates times 334 basically it's the idea this is at this and the local region is this is between 0 to 334 0 or, or 333 probably and 0 and 333 uh, which is sort of where this is uh, but it's actually and this is actually the map coordinate which is actually um, the coordinates of 334 which is that you know there's actually probably I'm not sure if there's three and thirty-four. Um, you know these little square chunks here. Uh, we, you know, we talked. About, these may not be. Um, hello. Uh, I asked. Oh. Mm. Anyways, this this idea that so so well, there's two. That's sort of the two. Um, sharp extent, yeah, here we go, that's the, what we're talking about. Sharp extent does this a lot as well, so. And the red, I think, is just the indication of where the, um, where the, um, yeah, uh, where the, uh, where this, uh, map chunk object is right here. So this is just a, um, a, a box collider that sits on the object. Uh, do we actually have a box collider? Um. Why can't we? Oh, uh, this I never, never knew this before. You click on that button, you get this. Actually, get to view the. Uh, so I think that's what the red is indicating is where the um, the the visible chunk is at this point. Um, uh, anyways, uh, the rest of this is actually just the lights. The camera are all just basics. Um, we 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 set that up a little bit. So um, there isn't really anything else here. Um, we talked about the terrain. We talked about the chair and generator. Um, it also has a number of other things, you know, like here's the 334, the water depth. Um, we talked about the, the, this is the Perlin noise sort of idea, um, where you have the persistence and, and uh, lac lac lacunarity and the scale. The scale, I think, is the 6.7 is sort of like that, the uh, the distance, uh, sort of like the, uh, the wave distance or something you might think about. Um, or, you know, it probably has better explanations for that, so... Uh, anyway, so, um, uh, let's see, bunny, wh where's the difference in the bunny, um, let's look at the bunny, bunny one and bunny two are not in the difference right here, um, they're the same bunnies, but there's probably a, um, um, brum -pum -pum. there is a, probably a, uh, is there a way to say that, I'm trying to say gender, is there a gender ability in here? Oh, I think there's actually a bunny class. Am I mistaken that there's actually a bunny class? Um, Do we talk about surroundings? Yeah, so the surroundings are sort of just where the... Okay, so the surrounding is... Um, we look at this. This is part of the uh, animal uh, right here. Uh, so this is, And this is basically the environment. So we ask the environment, and that's sort of what we're asking for the view distance of where we're at. Uh, but we're asking, hey, this is where we're sitting. This is where we are. What's around us? So this sense is sort of it asks the environment what the closest, uh, uh, you know, plant map is, and then what's the closest uh, food source. Uh, so this is actually not. Uh, this is not. This is based on the plant. So this is actually would have to do a different. Um, you know, this would actually have to do a different. Um, you know, for the prey map. Which I, there's probably a prey map where it actually returns the prey map as well. If you look at the uh, prey map, uh, find all references. No. This is like feels like it's old code for some reason. Anyways, there's a there's a prey map here where it actually has a. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so a lot of these is also uh, you use these registers and um, and plant death. So it's like the environment is like um, another really good example of this was uh, Quill 18 did this one where it's like uh, gnomes and badgers and the gnomes would eat plants and then run into things. 
and that's sort of like this environment is this uh, this sort of world around you and, and basically these maps um, and I think these are I want to say the environment is actually part of a uh, it's part of a larger it's like the region but it might actually be the entire region it may not it may not be the it may be the actual I'm not sure if this is actually included the 334 or if it includes the um, if it includes the um, the entire 11,000 nodes basically that's is kind of like the environment is the 11,000 nodes um, and some sort of either in the regional where it's like you have this little you know local environment or you have the world environment it's like the world is kind of what it's talking about uh, and that's where you get the, and that's kind of where it sort of thinks about is like, this is your, um, this is kind of your initial. Uh, anyways, another really good video on this is um, uh, Bored to Bits, was it? Um, Bored to, oops, Bits had a, had a um, procedural systems and before the flocking, um, was this a long time ago? Uh, I thought it was Bored to Bits, but it might have been someone else. Anyways, it's like this idea of a... Um, yeah, it may not have been Bored to Bits. Who had the uh, Forest Critter C-Sharp Unity? I'm sure lots of people did this, but I was thinking about a very specific one that actually had this pretty recently. No, I'm not seeing it off the top of my head. Anyways, it was like this idea that he had this forest idea. I thought it, I thought it was bored a bit. Anyways, it was a uh, pretty cool. Um, it was sort of the same idea. Um, yeah. Anyway, so you basically have the environment. It is sort of, it, it's sort of, and then that is, is the the environment is sort of what uh, you can see in here uh, through the through the accessories of the environment. So it's like uh, like when the plant dies right here um, through the plant, it actually you know here's the amount remaining. So um, a plant is again is just a living entity, and then it just has the amount remaining, um, and then it's sort of like, and then when the um, yeah, see, the environment is not being consumed here. So the environment is actually consuming. The plant is actually consuming. That's kind of the video where he showed you where the plant is act the the rabbit is eating the plant at point one a second. So it's like you have this um, consume factor that's like every so often you eat the plant. It gives you, um, yeah. I wish really wish I could see. I swear there was a. Anyways, um, Quill 18 actually had a. Um, it was almost the exact same thing. Uh, uh, gnomes and badgers. Let's see if I can find it from gnome and badgers. Uh, yeah, so here he has uh, something somewhere. You could probably find it in here um, a very long time ago. Um, yes. Uh, he also talks about a little bit of the same sort of terrain ideas, but these are based on different terrains. Um, let's see if I can find a... Is it where you can search? No. Uh, no. Critter? I swear. Anyways, it's definitely there. Sorry, probably why my videos are three hours long. But yeah, there's. It's just a. Um, uh, let's see if I can. I think it was before the. Um, oh yeah, these are really cool procedural gen, um, galaxies and stuff. It's so sad that he, he sort of quit. <laughs> That's why it's awesome. Sebastian's kind of continuing on here. Uh, 
let's see if I can find. I think it's it was just it was a live stream basically. It was just him doing a. Um, anyway, so it's a pretty cool one that talked talked about the same sort of thing with you know um, gnomes and badgers, um, and they had uh, they basically went and did. Um, um, it might have been after that. Yeah, so it's like gnomes and badgers would they, uh, you know, the 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 badgers, and it's kind of the exact same thing where the badgers would go out and eat the uh, the gnomes. Uh, you know, it's just kind of uh, based on his channels and his sort of ideas. Uh, and the, uh, the the gnomes would go and hide under uh, things, uh, and this sort of like the um, yeah, unity forest system. Uh, you know, it's actually I thought it was bored to bits. Systems. Oh, you know, I think it is actually. It's, it's yeah. It's 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 actually probably pretty poorly named, but it's actually systems uh, demonstration. He actually never uh, really got into the actual. Um, yes. Yeah, so it's his systems uh, demo here, um, where he talks about the um, you know the making not the entity component system, but it's like that's a, sort of the environmental system. Um, yeah, so here's, um, any, anyway, so he has that sort of same idea where he talks about this forest system where he builds this um, this sort of the exact same sort of idea where you build this. And that's what he's working on here. Uh, anyway, so they, the plants have this, um, I'm not sure why the animals are not consuming. Um, but anyway, so let's uh, let's talk about the actions. So the actions are sort of these, uh, this um, stain, the state systems. Um, uh, quite a few people have this idea, but it's just, uh, anyway, so you have this idea that you're, you're in this resting state, you're exploring, you're going to shoot, going to water, eating, drinking, um, you're looking for a mate, uh, you know, he talked about maybe that, looking for mates is sort of another sort of, uh, system they talked about. I'm not sure why these, feels like this is very old code of looking at it, but it could be part of the exploration, and then when you find a, a different, a, a bunny, um, but it feels like that uh, looking for mate would be sort of another system. Um, uh, anyway, so you also sort of need, um, um, and you also sort of like need this um, bool is male um, in here as well, uh, equals true, uh, which I always like to do. And then, anyways, and then you have, so then now we have male and, um, um, yeah. I guess, oh, I was looking, um, anyway, so, um, the other thing, too, I don't think there's, there's any, um, yeah, there isn't any, um, any, um, subclasses of, uh, animals, so the foxes, uh, foxes and bunnies are the same animals, right here, um, at least that's what I, I assume would be the way to do it, um, right here, uh, yeah, so then we have the, um, you can see here the, uh, the tree, uh, the trees are actually plants as well. I think, uh, oh, well, the trees are actually just a, a, a an object as well, but really I would just add in a plant um, or maybe subclass this out, but I would probably add in a plant script as well to the tree, um, and then you can then you can add in some sort of like a subclass of, um, um, you look at the plant, you could add some sort of subclass of, um, well, some sort of way to say um, what kind of, um, you could have a, um, here, let me go, namespace, ecosystem, uh, just to kind of go with the flow of what's happening here, we could have this um, public and new uh, plant type, uh, and then uh, you know grass or tree, and then um, oops, grass or tree. Or you might want to be a little bit more generic, but now um, for now, so then that will separate out our trees. Uh, we'll let this compile. Oh nope, um, I'm missing one. Um, one extra thing here. We need a um, public um, plant type. Um, plant type equals. Uh, I always. I'm not sure why people don't do this, but I always give a, a base. Um, a base thing like that. Let's see. What are we? Looks like I screwed something up. Oh. Oh. Um. Why is that not the case? Oh. 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 I know why. I know why. I know why. 
um, yeah, it's the problem here is um, what we're going to have to do. Uh, it's basically saying that this is uh, under a uh, namespace reference because we're not making this a uh, no, no, come on. we're not making this a, a reference to the uh, which we should include the um, the environment, but then that will it chain of act chain could chain much higher. Anyways, um, uh, that, it's just so that you, your code can sit with other people's codes. Uh, anyway, so now we have a plant. It's a grass, and then we can set the, the plant type of a, the tree. Um, that's how I really like to do it. Um, and the animal, um, I actually like to have an animal type as well, but because we're sort of separating these out to, um, to uh, herbivores and carnivores, um, right here, yeah. uh, through the diet. Which is not a really, I guess, you know, so these are the, um, you know, um, so, yeah. And then we can have, like, a, you know, so, anyway, so that we can see our, um, and then remember, too, like, the, uh, we can actually turn these into, uh, omnivores, like we're talking about. So, they'll eat, um, they'll eat bunnies. Um, then you can actually, you, we haven't programmed that in there, but that would actually be another way to expand this system, too. Um. Uh, uh, anyway, so I think that's pretty good. Uh, oh, the other, so uh, we haven't done anything with the trees, um, but these are sort of now all our trees um, have the tag. Um, you can tag them as well, but I like the um, the idea that we have data elements that sort of separate these things out. Um, maybe you'd want to do something more generic, like you'd want to um, name this to, um, you know, um, plant. And uh, this would be a... Um, well, a tree or something, you know, it's like much more, like even though plants are, um, you could actually have another uh, public class uh, tree as well, which is derived from a plant, would be another way to do it um, um, as well. Uh, so then we can actually um, remove, um, remove the plant and then add a, a tree script as well, uh, which should should pop up and say, hey, oh, a tree? Hello? Uh-oh. No, that should work. Oh, you know what? Uh, because, um, sorry, my bad. Because the, um, because it's a subclass of uh, uh, another thing, it's kind of a really bizarre. Because it's, um, it's sitting in a uh, subclass of another class, um, this it wouldn't actually, um, and I think these are actually, um, oh, yeah, so using ecosystem, and I think, uh, were these squawk? No, oh, come on, here, yeah, innocent, oh, sorry, I hit the F key by accident, yes, two hours, uh, these should squawk and say that they're, you know, anyway, so what this does is it creates a plant, uh, here, let me eliminate this, I think that should actually squawk and say, hey, you're, uh, you need to overload the, um, maybe they're, not. anyway, so now we can add the, uh, tree, uh, which is the tree. Yeah, and then now we have the, uh, the plant, which we can actually make it a, a tree, and then you double click on this, and so now we have the, uh, uh, anyway, so the plant is actually part of a living entity. It doesn't actually use the start. It just sort of has this own function, um, but living entity is actually a, a, a mono behavior script which is why it sits on a, uh, a script, but we actually don't use, so like what I was thinking of here is like if you use public void start uh, like that, then this should actually start squawking and say, uh, yes, yeah, it says um, this over hides inherited member. So you'd have to do something like overload. Um, or over, oh, override, I mean, sorry. Yeah, and then you go base.start. Uh, I think it wants a virtual um, I want this to be a virtual, yeah, so this would actually have to be a virtual function under the living entity. I think this would actually have to be a, oh, can we just do a override of the, uh, anyways, kind of, kind of a little, <laughs> just playing. Uh, let's see. oh, it can't, oh, new, uh, new would be the case. Yeah, since we're not using a virtual, uh, and it's just saying, this is, this is not an error. This is a warning. Uh, basically, this would run if we had some sort of like logic running here on the start, like some really crucial logic. This would never run on our trees because it, it didn't run. So um, here we can say new 
uh, which was then fix that because now we're saying we're over oops, uh, new void we're saying hey this is the actual start you want to run and then you go base uh, to get to the the one you'd go base dot start uh, the other thing you'd really probably want to do is make this a virtual like these are why this virtual set coordinate in a virtual um, and then you can override um, then you can say over I think uh, you can still do new but then you can actually do override um, uh, uh, what do you want oh sorry you need public uh, because it's a uh, so now now we're saying this is the the virtual and that's sort of what we're doing here is you can see from the living entity that the set coordinate is actually virtualized and it's actually through the environment or through the animal which is probably yes here's the override of this one which overrides the um the uh oh yeah oh yeah and here we go see we have the actual um the here's the same thing as we have the po the protected virtual of the start so we actually need to override now the start because that's sort of and that's sort of that same oh no it has to be um public yeah i'm not i'm um protected uh it, it makes sense why you would do the um protected but uh because it's a, a uh, an override you have to use publics um which doesn't it, in the start function doesn't really make a lot of sense but in these next actions you want them to be sort of be protected because then they can't be called by anybody else with the, the class definition uh anyway so so yeah so um i'm not sure of the looking for mate where that comes from but I also we also you know wanted to add in the mail um so here we can actually change our bunnies as well uh if you look at our bunny script here we'd actually have to make the change here um why are we not getting that oh it's not public uh, should we yeah we probably should just make this public for now there's probably a better way to do this but um but up here is we have these sort of ideas um just in terms of what i want to do right now just to showcase the code because this is sort of like the idea here um so now we can actually say uh, this one's the male uh this bunny right here is the male and then this bunny's the female i don't know if that's how it works in his, his game uh, you'd have to ask him or i'm not sure how he actually implemented it but anyway so now we have the two different bunnies uh, sort of one way to do it again uh, again i'm not sure how he did it um but yeah you might be able to do that through the the living entity but living entity is more of like a um base entity or something and that's sort of like the entity component system it's not the any comp this is not an entity component system it's just saying it's an entity which is like um you know is this sort of this idea of what this really is it's a um i'm not sure what the best definition of entity would be um it's not really a c-sharp thing but programming um it's it's um yeah uh semantics significance and is you should oh yeah yeah so it's just like a you know a, a, it's just basically a real like a a concept so it's like an employee or student music album you know it's just some sort of base it's like a base class basically um yeah um and that's why entity component system is like a where it's like the it's the entity is the e of the ecs but sort of like the entity is just sort of the it's it's bas basically what the, the core the mono behavior is sort of a lot of that's sort of the difference here is this would derive from a a struct right and like our coordinates is actually a struct so that would be the difference here is that we actually have a struct of an entity um versus our or a, a living entity which is a mono behavior so the mono behavior is like you know this is the the game object is in the world at this vector coordinates but he's sort of and that's sort of like he's sort of going that direction where he's using the coordinates but the mono behavior is like the graphic object so it's like if you can separate out the graphics object model in the display and have a living entity structure then that's sort of more like what it's going for and in and ecs would actually have a um a, a way to deal with the graphic objects as well um 
and that's sort of like, and then this is sort of like, and that's sort of just a, um, a, um, a very basic, um, this is all it has. It's just, it's like a data, you know, it's like a, um, and that's honestly too, you know, to me, it's like where it's sort of like unity has gotten into this bloat, um, is the only way I can say it, you know, because if you just create an empty here, it gives you a transform, um, which is actually interesting because the transform is actually in the local, it has a local position at 000, zero, zero but it also has a world position which doesn't show here, but then this is actually tied to a mono behavior object instead of, so like transform is really, you know, the basic core of what you want, but somehow they've got overhead on top of overhead on top of overhead now and it's like unity is just getting bloated and it's like and you know for me i would love to see a transform just have the local and that's sort of what he has here it's exactly what he's doing here he has the local coordinates and the the regional coordinates or the chunk coordinates um chunk coordinates um like um, um the colony sim for athos or sharp accent uh, actually sort of does the sort of same thing it's like you have these chunk coordinates or regional or, or people call them a lot of different things that's why i just like to stick to the um uh but these are like the world coordinates as well um it doesn't actually in in sort of the um in the larger picture it doesn't sort of work like that that these are you know the local versus the worlds doesn't sort of fit like that um um you know, uh, let's see if we can see local versus world coordinates. Um, is there a way to sort of, oops, I can't spell coordinates. Um, yeah, so it's like you get this kind of really bizarre system here where it's, I think it's like, it's because of the, um, the offset of the object. It's like, even though it sits in the local, that's where it's like, it becomes like where it doesn't sort of fit. And I think that's where Unity kind of went off in this sort of tangent is because they sort of, it's like the modeling term is where they, they're derived from. Um, yeah, that's just, it's hard to sort of think of how to picture this, but it's like you're, you're in the local view, but then you rotate in your world view. So it's like the local view is at zero, zero, zero. That's why all objects are, you know, that's why one thing about the base objects here is you want the bunnies to be at zero, zero, zero because if you if you put them at five five it puts it into a uh, you know it puts it's like all of a sudden it's gone and your bunnies clear off over here so when you think your bunnies at zero 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 it's going to be offsetted by five 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 which doesn't make any sense so essentially what you do is set your bunnies to be the local coordinates of zero 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 oh sorry how do i uh, which is, and then you have this um, object here. And then oftentimes, too, what I do is under the hierarchy is I create this under the, um, I create this little um, object here called the node geo. Um, and then I create the 3D object of the cube uh, point one in my example. And then you can see this is where the bunny sits in the world. Um, so that's kind of like the bunny sitting. Um, you know that's the size of the bunny and then if we um wish we could somehow um maybe we go to that like it's sort of like the tree as well it's like if you go to the tree and you create this sort of same object where you create this empty and then you create the 3d object of the cube and set the cube at point one um it's sort of like where you get this idea that the the, the trees are actually in the isometric is like you get the the tree is actually 1.2 outside of our tile so it's actually kind of more takes up two tiles um and the sort of like sort of side you like how do you i'm not trying to get this to be um there's you can create an environment where it's like it creates this um environment where it includes this but anyway so then you'd have to sort of come in here um and sort of reduce your trees by 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then maybe the, this by two um, but that's not going to look right. Um, that's going to be like, so it's going to be 0. 0.75 or something. Um, which is not going to be great because now I have to figure out what the uh, difference is here, which is like one point. 
1.5 or something. 1.75? Yeah, 1.75 or something. Nope, nope. Anyway, so that's probably more of the um, the idea here. So it's like that's sort of the uh, where this is sort of where I want the, the the tile to be. And you can see sort of too. This is the offset of. It's so weird. Like this is the offset as well of if you make the point five and point five. Here, let me actually um, reset, let me go back to the um, the bunny. Yeah, if we actually make this um, yeah right here, you can actually make this point five. And point 0.5. Oh, nope, sorry. Uh, point 0.5 in the X. And now you can see that it's actually lining up on the tiled version. So that's actually another tricky thing I've been missing. Even though it's, it's like it doesn't, it fits on the, um, that sort of. And that's sort of, I think you can think about it. It's like here's the local coordinates. And then here's the, it goes into here's the world coordinates. And then it's like, and that's sort of like the chunk data. This is sort of like where you actually get this really cool, interesting take is like as you zoom in like the level of detail is now now we can actually see that this is actually you know a four by four subtile and then I actually get it you know, I don't think we can do any 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 finer than that but you actually yeah there we go we can now we can actually see that it's more of a 16 by 16 Let's see if we can there we go you know it's like a 16 by 16 you know mini subtile so it's like it's pretty cool uh, but then again, it's, you know, it's like you get down to here, but anyways, and then it's like, this is kind of where it's like bizarre for me. I wish this was more centered on the, um, the node, but this is kind of where I get this 0.5 offset a lot of times. Um, I am actually just thinking about the, the center point of this, this world is based on the, the, if the radius around the object is where you're sitting on, because like when you're standing, you're not thinking, oh, I'm at the bo bottom left corner of the world you're actually thinking that you're actually smack dab in the middle you know oh what's under your feet um which is kind of where this cube actually sits is like a person is actually sitting you know and then their arms too it's like the t-pose that's why the t-pose is so great because your arms extend out to you know maybe over to here or something in their t-pose um because you know and that's just the you know let me google a t-pose real quick that's sort of that general idea is the T-pose is standing at the um, model T-pose. That's a very standardized um, model coordinate system. Oh, what? Uh, T-position? Well, I think it's actually... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, you people. It's, it's actually looking for a model T and not actually a... Yeah, anyways, here's a... So this is a model T-pose. So you can see at the actual... X and Y local coordinates is like that's the zero zero, the zero and the Y is like cuts down the middle of them, and then it, the the the, um, uh, the Z cuts down the middle of them, and the X is sort of like uh, anyway. So that's kind of why you see a lot of models in the T pose. They don't have to be in T pose positions. You can see that a lot of these models are not in their T pose positions. They're also sort of stretched. That's but that's sort of the the but it's the best. I think it's the best sort of humanoid uh, stance because it gives you the um the total distances um you know and whatever the model is you can sort of see it doesn't matter what it is it's just um you know and then here's sort of this uh, this idea is this is the world position and here's the local um down here's down to even the the the, the fingers are actually part of the local you know yeah so here's like he's modeling um, anyway, so that's sort of a modeling thing is where they got off. Right? So anyway, this video is quite long. I, th I hope that handles a lot of questions. Um, I can't wait to see what Sebastian does next. Um, um, let's see. We, so we talked about the, uh, pretty much everything I think we talked about. I, I do want to say that I think this is kind of a pre... It's not quite up to the 1.0 video. I'm not sure what in what case that is. Um, you can sort of see in the animals where, the, uh, especially in the environment, uh, where is the environment? We don't see a sort of consume variable here. Um, uh, yeah, here's a here's a, a the utilities as well. Sort of, um, this is not kind of how I do it, but it's actually a a pretty, um, you know, like this is the tile visible, like given the x y of the tile 
giving where they you know where they can go it sort of runs the distance checks and sort of runs a lot of things these are sort of based on the coordinates um that's sort of like and i mean the coordinates are pretty cool um you know where he builds his own coordinate system um that's sort of like uh, i've actually done this as well before the vector two ints i've actually created my own um uh i think i called them um what did i call them uh, I called them something, but I have my own. Um, um, I actually, you can call it a class as well. It doesn't really structure probably better, but I call them. Um, uh, I call them something. Anyways, um, it's just basically the same thing. Whereas, like you have this, um, the read only is probably are nicer, um, but I don't like them because you can't see the coordinates like this. That's why I do it a little bit differently. Um, and you could you you could do a system. Um, but it's actually not going to help you. Um, this would actually run a ton more overhead because of the data serialization. And these are actually um, read-only data, which wouldn't show up in the, the editor as well. So anyways, and then you have the static uh, conversion functions as well. So these are the, uh, where you run the, you can actually say the coordinate dot, which is probably what this is. Oh, no, it's just coordinate dot. And this is sort of like the utility as well. So this is like you would probably have the, the environment utility or the coordinate utility, which just runs the statics. These, these runs are, I'm not sure if the statics run the overhead um, of the structure. Um, it feels like it should, but maybe it, it just doesn't do that. But anyways, you see how the, uh, this is actually a base, is this a base constructor? Why would it have an override? I guess it would have an override and oh, and the operators, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this. Oh, the implicit operators. Yeah. So this is where it's kind of like the. Um, yeah. So these are base objects for the struct. Yeah. So they have base objects. Um, yeah. So this is. Is this where you get the? Yes. Yeah, so this is like where this is the. Um, and you go to the definition of this, which is the, the um, static operator. I guess you would actually have to have the static uh, bool operator here. Because um, then it wouldn't know what to do in this in case where it's like you have the um, the not equal to, um, you know. Uh, anyway, so. Um, but then you have sort of, yeah, so you have to, you know, that's kind of a lot of this is where it's all, it's custom code, essentially. It's not complicated. You can sort of think of this like a vector two, but you can't put out, you know, he was having trouble with that. Um, so, I mean, this is basically all it is is a vector two int. Which I um, that's kind of what I think I called these um, int vectors. Yeah, I think I called these public class int vector two or something at some point. So, and then I, I think I called them i three uh, public class uh, int threes. Yeah, I called them int threes as well at some point because um, that's basically what I was thinking about. Is just you have uh, my int threes actually have this sort of same idea, um, but you have the z as well. Uh, well. These are actually, uh, I noticed actually something about this, um, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, well, innocent. Uh, this is Y and Z. Uh, so these are the X, Y, which I don't think I like because that's why it's like, yeah, that's sort of like when you create the quad uh, right here. We created this quad, um, which is right there, but the quad is actually X, Y. So if you do this, the quad is like the the Y is actually, so if I hit the Y, it's actually moves up on the Y. And I don't like that because that to me doesn't convert to a, to a 3d plane. But if you shake this down to an, uh, to 90 degrees, which rotates the end of the plane, then your, your Y is actually, you're increasing the height, which I think is, makes a lot of sense. And your Z is actually, you know, you know, like minus uh, minus five because we're at zero zero and we're pulling back from the camera. So that's like the why. That's why I always do this. Is like the um, I also do this sort of idea that the, uh, x is um, forward, uh, forward and back, and your z. This is the z plane. Is your left and right, and your y plane is your up and down and I think that just simplifies everything that you're doing and you don't have to have these complicated coordinate systems to because you're already having the idea that the the coordinate system is in this you know idea 
and it's like you're looking down at the environment instead of like and that's sort of like a lot of 2d games do that where it's like your camera is looking at the environment like this and your camera is now um, in the orthographic as well so if like you pull your camera back see if we can get a, a good view of the camera I might not see oh because I don't have the camera so if we take the camera and make it uh, zero 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 and then we pull over here uh, oh, and then down I mean it's just kind of really con but if you do the uh, if you do the I'm um, just videos going crazy if you do the uh, orthographic that's actually kind of where you get this idea from is like you get this camera that's like um, and oh, I think we have to pull back that's probably why yeah there we go and then we, we, we don't do the 45 and then we can say uh, size of mm, anyway so then you get this idea that you're looking at this uh, this tile right here right here so then your your map is actually kind of laid out like that um, in frontal um, let's see if I can let me pull up an old Zelda map uh, Legend of Zelda map yeah so here's the total Legend of Zelda map so it's like you're looking at the map face on like that's how this it's laid out so this is the X or this is the Y of the monitor which is <laughs> it's actually it's reversed because this is positive or this is negative and that's positive but because it's like it's it's you know this is positive you know anyway so it's and then this is and this is the x as well so it's like you're um but yes yeah, so you can sort of see these um these maps are laid out like that uh, i always like the fact that that the map is actually laid out that's why i like the camera in this perspective right here at 45 degrees so it's like you get this really great um camera view like we talked about originally anyways that's kind of going back to what we were talking about originally but oh i have to click here anyways but you can see the uh oh, in the scene view we can kind of see like if you get your camera to this centralized position that you can move like i'm holding right arrow left arrow oh no uh, you, I think it's because the camera. Um, oh, that's actually the editor camera. So that's not, not how the editor. Ca I think you actually, yeah. Um, this is actually, uh, yeah. And then you'd have to do like the mouse uh, to pull it back like that, and then mouse could actually go like left and right like that. But and you can also. Um, but actually, I, um, I like that as well. But it's sort of like this actually is not the. This is more of the zoom where I'm pushing up, and it should actually go. Like that that would actually be better for me but it's actually oh it's, can we get into that yeah so now we can actually get into the on the perspective now we can go back and forth because we're in that perspective or the isometric I mean of the camera and now we're sort of in that um, I think it looks much better here because you can get the it's you, this is like how, what the Zelda map would look like um, you know face down but now we're in this perspective where we can actually get this um, this really cool 3d look which I think is much better. Anyway, so that's pretty much the video. Uh, hopefully, it's uh, it's about two hours long. So, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, Sebastian will come out with it. Uh, you can you can see the GitHub here. Uh, you know, so I guess yeah. So here it um, yeah. Here's his GitHub Seb Lags, um, Sebastian Lags. So it's S E B L H. You can just search for Seb Lag, uh, which is his GitHub, and he actually has really cool. Oh, you know, yeah. So he has a lot of cool. This is kind of how I found out first because I kept going to. Oh no! Um, yeah, let me go back to uh, one more back. You can actually click on this one for some reason. It doesn't find it like that. But anyway, so now you can see. Um, yeah, yeah. He actually committed. Uh, wow. Yeah. So he had 30, 20 commits to this. Uh, he hasn't done anything in a while. You can sort of see his uh, commits right here. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, so maybe he's, he's sort of working on it in the background and then waiting to do a commit. So hopefully that's the plan. But anyway, so it's really cool. Um, you can download all this. Uh, that's sort of the two hours video to explain how to get it up. Uh, 2019.13 or 2019.3 is in sort of alpha. Um, it doesn't seem to work as well. Um, I think it's there's many reasons. I think it's partly the train and the train me or the mesh and how he does it. But anyways, it works, so it's cool. Hopefully you can have fun with that. Hopefully that, you know, two hours of explaining how this all works really helps me 
uh, and then sort of, um, I think it's difficult for me because it's, um, I sort of do, I do a tile based, you know, or node based sort of system where it's like I get, I want to be able to click on a single node and be able to zoom down to that single node and then see the surrounding node around me. Um, I just have that preferential treatment. This is like where you get tons of a, um, you get a much better, larger view uh, here. And I think he's trying to, try to implement the uh, regional where it shows up only a certain section of the region shows up through the chunking system. Uh, which is kind of like, yeah, he, I think he did in a lot of his um, his other videos as well. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of complicated things, especially when you go from per chunk layer. Um where you have to line up your regions so they're, you know, they're not, um, you know, they're not mismatching your, um, and also the biomes as well. So, anyway, so that should be pretty cool. So, hopefully, thanks very much. Uh, my name is Makai Stevens. Uh, I do, I, I do have my own channel here. Um, I guess we should pimp my channel as well. Might as well talk for two hours. My, uh, yeah. So here's, uh, yay, my one lovely picture. I also have my uh, gaming channel with my cat there. Um, but yeah, so I, I have very few subscribers, but we actually talked about Sebastian Lebelon on, this is sort of what my game looks like, uh, where you can see the tile right here with this, um, we actually talked about Sebastian in a lot of videos, I think, um, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of videos, uh, yeah, so, and then you can see the, uh, board to bits system here, yeah, here's board to bits right here, so this is what the system like, here's the bunnies, and my trees, and my grass, uh, and I think I used, uh, wolves, or, something i use ghost or i this is like a creature pack i use a lot of time so anyway so that's sort of that same system i've been talking about a lot so um yeah so and you can kind of this is kind of the idea here it's like you got these individual tiles and then they've got uh, wall tiles or um sort of what i've been doing um and this is kind of an overhead um oh this is a different uh, snake game uh but yeah and then here's a tree demonstration where i'm adding um um yeah, I'm adding, uh, oh, is this, I think that's a private video. Yeah, it's unlisted. Anyways, it's just adding a, a demonstration here where it talks about interacting with the tree and then also interacting with uh, grass around you. So it's like the player can um, go around and harvest wheat and stuff like that, um, or the tree, or the rabbits can eat. That's sort of what these are, the different colors, like the green uh, and the green, the grass high, you know, grows to 0 0.2, but the, the wheat grows to 1.5, so you can actually walk through high wheat fields and stuff like that. Uh, and then sort of here where you can get this uh, height view as well. Um, you can This is a 0.3 difference, but you can get that height view as well. So that's kind of my goal, but then I can only get uh, a couple hundred um, tiles at a time. But yeah, like this uh, definitely, um, if you want to take this further, uh, the board to bits one here, talks about this um this sort of forest system here where i have this chunk uh i make this chunk of you know 32 by 32 or whatever and i have trees grass rabbits and i think ghost or wolves or a ghost or uh, there's a, a i have another object i can't remember but that's basically was my wolf or my um you know my my badger whatever is going to eat the eat the eat the eat the bunnies uh, anyways, uh, this this in this video is not public, but uh, yeah. And then there's uh, and also I have the game that it's available on Steam. I'm having um, been working on it for a very long time. Um, yeah. So and then um, yeah. So we also talked about game design as well, talking about uh, various components and um, the RPG design was really awesome. Had like a ton of and then we also talked about the uh, uh, roguelike designs for a lot of times, but. Uh, I thought there was another video series in here. Um, uh, the other thing, too, uh, the thing about Board to Bits as well, is talking about his series. I took uh, Quill's, um, there's, it's called Badgers and Gnomes. Um, it's on his Twitch. I'm sure it's on his crate somewhere. Um, but I, I sort of took Quill's and Board to Bits and combined them to my own system. Uh, anyway, so that's I do a lot of video responses to people. Um, I'm sure there's a Sebastian in here somewhere. Um... I th oh, I think it might have been on a different channel um, where I started the uh, original channel um, where I had this a long time ago where I responded to his uh, cave. Or it was actually a, uh, a uh, color system based on, you know, um, you know, a color coordinate system based on the uh, the maps. You have a 2D map and it's like you design 
um, you know, these um, color, you know, um, different colors based on the map. Yeah, I don't think I have anything recent, so I probably should owe them one. Um, yeah. Uh, they take a lot of time. The, the responses take a lot of time because I'm not trying to make a response to someone's video. Uh, like this black and prod one, it's like I made a an entire um, cave, uh, you know, dungeon system that was sort of building a... He had a question about, uh, I think he had a question about something. Yeah, so it's a 64 by 64 challenge. So that's sort of like that chunk as well. It's like a 64 by 64 chunk. And I sort of took that and took it into a, a pixel challenge that the chunk is 64 by 64. And you, it's like you take that color map and you convert it, convert it into a, um, you know, pixel challenge. Here's like the other thing. This is another unlisted video, but the, the, gal the Galaxian is sort of like this old school and it's like you have that same sort of tile based movement left and right where it's like you hit left the character moves left and, and this tile it's like a pixelized system but anyway so uh and there's also the free this uh this uh, sharp extent one is the survival horror it's uh where you can also take the same 3d system but uh, uh 2d tile sort of hard chord system and then add in a like a zelda like uh free roam or or you know a breath of the wild or whatever it's called now where you take a free roaming camera through that system that's probably where my sex second second iteration you can see that down here uh, i've been playing with that a lot in this version where it's like you you're you know ethan the unity character can run around in this um uh, environment with uh, you know sheep and a lot of things um yeah so a lot of uh concepts like that so anyways uh, i think this has been two hours uh yeah so you know <laughs> Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I should get this posted. Uh, sometimes I don't post them, but I think this is a pretty good one, even though it's uh, two hours. Uh, it talks a lot about going through the entire... Um, maybe it spoils some for Sebastian, but he kind of talks about that with his his, his video, and then you sort of... You, you, you don't get to see the code, but now you can sort of see the code with the population, the animals. Population is just the uh, the um, initial you know load of, of people. Uh, and then I, I don't see the uh, the um, birth and death and all that. I don't see the birth. I definitely see the the death and the plants and stuff, but they don't seem to be active. So, anyways, I guess I'll get this posted and um, we'll see what what goes on. Thanks very much. You take care. Thanks for checking it out.